Hey friends, welcome to the channel. Now you can finally talk to ChatGPT and also get spoken responses back. If you want to know how to use that to improve your target language, you found the right video. Los geht's! My name is Dustin, I'm an IT project manager from Germany. On this channel we create content that helps us be more productive, to learn new things, especially languages and to live a happier and more fulfilling life. Today I will show you two browser plugins that you can use to practice a conversation in your target language with ChatGPT and that completely for free. After that we will try it out together and I will also provide the prompt that we will use for you to try it out after. Okay, let's dive into today's... Ah, oh wait, wait, wait. First... A nice sip of coffee. Ah. So there are currently two different Chrome plugins available which you can use to give ChatGPT a voice and also make it converting your voice into text. Both have a pretty similar feature set and functionality so I would advise you to just try them out both. What you need to keep in mind is that the plugins only work in Chrome, not in other browsers that are based on Chromium. I've tried it out to install the plugins in Brave, which is based on Chromium, but it didn't work. So make sure to use Chrome. One is called Voice Control for ChatGPT and it offers a wide range of languages. It's completely for free and really easy to use. There are not really options to customize it, but that makes it also pretty beginner friendly. Also, when I tried it out, it had fewer bugs than the other one. The thing you can do though is to change the reading speed of ChatGPT and it has also some useful shortcuts but more on that later. Further, the available voices do sound not too bad. Of course it's not as good as Microsoft Asia for example or the other more sophisticated text to speak technologies and I've already made a video about that and I will link it somewhere here. Um, but nevertheless, it's not a pain to listen to. Talk to ChatGPT is the other one and it also offers a wide range of languages. It's as well completely for free, but offers way more options to customize it. What is cool about it is that you can not only change the language globally, but you can change the input and output language. Means you could talk in English, but receive, for example, French answers. You could also change the speed and have speech commands like stop and pause if you want to use it or do it so. When I tried it out, it had some glitches, then it stopped working suddenly. But overall, it made a pretty good first impression as well. Going forward, we will use for our example voice control for ChatGPT. Low skates. Okay, now let's try to have a real conversation with ChatGPT. I've already prepared something here, a prompt, and we will try out the plugin that I have mentioned earlier. Imagine you are a woman named Camille from France. You are in a bar. I'm a man named Antoine and we are having a conversation. You will say one sentence as Camille and wait for my response. As a side note, analyze my use of the French language and give me suggestions to improve it. Let's see how that goes. Okay, it's loading. Camille, bonjour, comment ça va? Hello, how are you? How a language model, he can understand and respond in French, but I'm not capable of analyzing human language proficiency. However, he can suggest that you practice speaking and writing in French regularly to improve your skills. You can also consider taking class or finding language exchange partners to help you practice and receive feedback. <laughs> Additionally, reading French books, watching French movies, and listening to French podcasts can also be helpful in improving your language proficiency. Very interesting, very interesting. Um, yeah, actually ChatGPT can that, kind of, so sometimes it responds like that, but in general that works. But interesting how ChatGPT is responding with a French accent and reading the English stuff, so quite, quite interesting. Um, so now let's have a look at the plugin. Here you can change the language, so of course we want to speak French, so I've chosen French already, but you could also choose between many other languages. And here you can click and then it will start to record. And let's, let's try that out together. Um, bonjour, très bien. Um, tu peux me tutoyer parce que nous sommes tous les deux encore jeunes. Let's send that. It would... Nah, Jen, that's not right. So we need to have an S at the end because it's plural. 
but it didn't do that. So I told her she should she 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 there again. She should should say you to me instead of vu. Ah, d'accord, pas de problème. Et toi, comment ça va? Ah, ok, no problème. And how about you? How are you? Ah, suggestion, it's important to remember that in French, formal. Language is often used when speaking with strangers, older people, or those in position of authority. It's always a good idea to start with formal language and wait for the other person to suggest switching to the informal. To form. In this case, since we're in a bar and likely around the same age, it's appropriate to use the informal form. Yeah, and yeah, they give me a suggestion that it's normally okay to start with the formal form, but I think that's less and less common, especially for younger people. So yeah, um, but that worked out, except that it says Antoine. So it should be Camille that I'm talking to. That's weird, okay. Never mind. Um, let's ask what Camille wants to drink. Camille, qu'est-ce que tu veux boire? Uh huh. Now it's loading. Today a bit slow, I'd say. Let's see. Camille. Je voudrais un verre de vin rouge, s'il te plaît. Et toi, qu'est-ce que tu vas prendre? Mm, Il would like a glass of red wine, please. And what about you? What will you have? And what about you? What will you have? There you go. Sometimes it takes a bit. Okay, red wine. Um, okay. Oui, bien sûr, je vais prendre aussi un verre de vin rouge. Mais je suis pas sûr quel vin. Peut-être euh, un vin français. Mais j'aime aussi beaucoup de vin italien. Qu'est-ce que tu en penses? Camille. Personnellement, j'adore le vin italien aussi, donc ça ne me dérange pas du tout si tu préfères prendre un vin italien. <laughs> Il y a une bonne sélection de vins ici, donc je suis sûr qu'on trouvera quelque chose de délicieux. Personally, I love Italian wine as well, so I don't mean that all if you prefer to have an Italian wine. There is a good selection of wine here, so I'm sure we will find something delicious. Something delicious. Ah, suggestion, it's important to remember that in French, the word peut-être means maybe or perhaps, so it's not used in the context of describing a wine be in French or not. A more appropriate word to use in this case would be probablement, probably, or sans doute, without a doubt. Hmm, interesting. I didn't know that. I don't know if that's true to use probablement or sans doute. Instead of peut-être, I think it works both. Mm. Well, all good. So then, what do we say next? Um, oui, bien sûr. Ok, je vais prendre le vin italien. Italien. Peut-être ou probablement du vin. Ah, let, let's do it again. So now you can just press escape and you can uh, start again. So we try that. D'accord, je vais prendre le vin italien. Le primitivo. Um, S'il vous plaît. Antoine. Parfait, je vais commander le vin italien primitivo pour nous deux. A suggestion, in French, it's more common to use the word nous instead of vous when addressing the waiter or bartender. So the correct way to say this would be le primitivo pour nous deux, 
S'il te plaît, or le primitivo pour nous deux. S'il vous plaît, depending on the level of formality. Well, that's right. That, that's that's right because we, I'm talking about us two, and if I wanna would want to order something for us two, then I would need to talk about us. So I would say nous, or I would say on. Um, but that works out. Okay, let's try something else now. Um, let's talk about books, for example. Quels sont tes auteurs des livres français préférés? Camille, j'ai plusieurs auteurs français préférés, mais en ce moment, je suis particulièrement fan de Guillaume Musso et de Fred Vargas. Et toi, quels sont tes auteurs préférés Il y a ses rôles favoris de French Authors, but right now I'm particularly a fan of Guillaume Musso and Fred Vargas. And you, who are your favorite authors hmm, C'est difficile à dire, mais j'aime beaucoup Harry Potter. de J.K. Rowling. Mm. Okay, as you can see, that didn't work out that well. Um, probably I will need to say J.K. Rowling with a French accent, but I don't know how that works. So let's try something different. J'aime beaucoup la série de Harry Potter. Mais j'ai aussi lu L'ombre du vent de Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Et qu'est-ce que tu aimes le plus de Guillaume Musso? Okay, Carlos Ruiz Safon didn't work out completely, but it got two-thirds of the name. J'adore la façon dont Guillaume Musso mélange romance, suspense et fantastique dans ses histoires. Mes livres préférés de lui sont probablement et après, et La fille de papier. Mais j'ai également apprécié ses autres romans comme Sauve-moi et Central Park. Je n'ai pas encore lu L'ombre du vent, mais je l'ajouterai à ma liste de lecture. Ah, oh, very cool, okay. Interesting, interesting. So, let's ask something else now. Qu'est-ce que tu aimes faire pendant ton temps libre? Okay, it's loading. Camille. Ah. J'aime beaucoup voyager et découvrir de nouveaux endroits, mais quand je suis chez moi, j'aime lire, écouter de la musique, faire du yoga et passer du temps avec mes amis et ma famille. Et toi, comment aimes-tu passer ton temps libre I really enjoy traveling and discovering new places, but when I'm at home, I like to read, listen to music, do yoga, and spend time with my friends and family. And you, how do you like to spend your free time mm, Really interesting, really interesting. Okay, I like that. Um... And now I could answer what I do in my in my free time. And yeah, we could go on like that forever. So this is pretty cool. So you can have a real conversation with ChatGPT now. Of course, it's not perfect, I agree. But it's working quite well. Sometimes when you need to put in some names like like author names or something that isn't working perfectly i have to admit but overall it's working just fine mm. yeah i can't wait to play around more with it a bit and also to try out other languages so far i've already tried out french italian I've tried out a bit of dutch but to be honest that has been quite hard um, german i haven't tried out yet Um, that's probably something for the future and yeah, I haven't even tried out English yet. So yeah, that also might make sense 
And of course, this can't replace yet a conversation with a real human and probably it never will, but it's a good way to practice some speaking without being intimidated and to do it yeah, just on your own. You can take the time you want, you can think about what you want to say, you can translate it even, and then you can ask and you can have, have a, yeah, like an intriguing conversation without needing to go through all the hassle and through the anxiety that it can provoke. Will you try to have a conversation with ChatGPT for your language learning? And if yes, what are you going to ask? Also, if you found the video useful, please leave me a like and a subscription to the channel and do not miss anything going forward. Click also on the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching and see you the next time.